Hey Pete, rather than uh, try to have, send you links to all the other videos I've made um, concerning Carby Val on the bench, I thought I'd just make one specifically for you to, to uh, address your issues. Uh, let's see, let's start with the last thing we talked about, which is your blackened two inch diameter gizmo right here. Okay, that's a vacuum cell. Inside is a vacuum diaphragm connected to this rod right here and connected to the lever system or spring system that connects to your second barrel butterfly. And the only time this vacuum cell operates is above 3000 RPM when you're on hard acceleration and you have enough vacuum. Uh, the vacuum pipes are missing on this one, but over here you can see the vacuum pipes. This vacuum goes over here to the first barrel where you're pulling a max vacuum and that vacuum operates this diaphragm and opens up the second barrel so once you you're on hard acceleration about 3000 rpm or above and this thing is going to st slowly open up to give you your full acceleration and that's all it does it sits there just doing it minding its own business uh, up until 3000 or, or more rpm and what it's supposed to do is you're supposed to have just a slight amount of free play right here because if you have no free play or this uh, this is where it's, it's a this linkage is adjusted so if you have this rod right here screwed down too tight against here what you do is you start screwing down and this stays stationary but you keep screwing this down and what happens is it starts to open up artificially the first barrel which will give you too high of an R, uh, an idle speed idle rpm so that's why the guy was telling you to <clears throat> to adjust this thing, but it had nothing to do with your backfiring, which is a lean situation. We'll, we'll address that in a little bit. Anyway, so make sure you got a little, just a teensy little bit of free play here, but this has to close. And when I say close, it has to close to darn near hold water in here. And what I do is I will look through this part, uh, the throat here, and I will hold this thing up to the sun and I will look through there and see if there's any light coming around the butterfly between the butterfly and here. And if there's any light coming around there, you're not going to get a decent idle because this the engine idles on the first barrel only, not on the second barrel. So I'm going to try to simulate uh, looking through here with, with the camera. Okay, see all the light coming around there? This thing's not going to seal worth crap and not going to run worth crap. That's why it's worn out. So you need to do that test yourself. Hold up to the sun, put your thumb right there, hold it closed, and look through there and see if you see light coming around there. There should be absolutely no light around, coming around there at all. Now then, the only way to do it on the first barrel is to uh, unscrew the idle set screw and then close the, the throttle uh, with your thumb now the problem here of course is you got your venturi deep inside there and it makes it almost impossible to see the perimeter of the uh, butterfly but uh, the the first barrel closing uh, so you just try to see if you can look down in there and see light coming through there it's, it's, it's hard to do when these things are assembled that's the critical part in terms of machine work of the butterflies if you if the guide machine the, the bodies and put in new butterflies then you should have a new surface in here and you should have a new butterfly and you should have perfect closing like i say when this thing closes you should darn near be able to hold water in here <sighs> throttle shafts make sure your throttle shafts are not sloppy loose and uh, because you can see this one moving right here see how sloppy loose that is that's that's an air leak and what that means is it's air is leaking past that's unmetered air leaking okay all your metering is done up in, in the front here with uh, this uh, uh, pre-atomizer and you got your uh, venturi and you have your all your all your adjustments which are in front of the butterfly uh, one of them of course is behind the butterfly for your mixture screw but the the metering of the fuel takes place on this side here and if you've got a leak an air leak on this side that means you gotta you're gonna be running lean which gets back to the possibility of uh, what what causes the um, backfire. Um, let's see here. All right, fuel. Uh, let's see. Okay, idle, idle jets. These are the G55 idle jets. All they do is handle the idle. These are real easy to service. If you ever lose your idle, 
All you do is unscrew it. Now you get the right size screwdriver for the job. This is not quite the right size, but it'll work. All right, so you unscrew it. And it has a very tiny orifice in it. And it's real easy for this little orifice to uh, clog up. And you just put a, just blow through it if you can, or, or maybe like the, a bristle from a, a hairbrush or something like that, and just unclog it. And that's all that this thing does. And that's all that controls your idle, is your idle jet. And you just, and if you're out on the road and this thing clogs up, and you can tell that because like if you're driving on the highway at warp speed and then you come to uh, off, off the highway and you come to a stop sign and boom the engine dies you've, you've sucked up some crap inside here and uh, all you have to do is is uh, swap this jet over to this side and you should be ready to, to, to drive off but or else you just unclog this one um, fuel delivery all right so you've got your new factory fuel pump and so you got fuel coming into here and what you're going to do is you're going to uh, take this float bolt cover off and you're going to see if you got any crap inside the carburetor for, in, for starters. And if it looks like there's fine sand in there, that's rust coming off the inside of your gas tank and you need to address that issue. And down inside the float bowl, you got a two-part float bowl. This is your main uh, float bowl, which goes to your main jets. We're off to the sides right here, the, these holes down here. This handles the fuel going to your accelerator pump circuit. So if, uh, so if you, uh, what you want to do is you want to, uh, when you pull the float bowl cover off and the, and the car has got normal amount of fuel in there, the fuel should be just about up to this septum um, within like a millimeter, either uh, up to it or just slightly below it. And what's down here at the bottom is a check valve, check ball and a check valve. And that's what allows the proper amount of fuel to go into your accelerator pumps uh, diaphragm, which are down here. So what you're going to do is you're going to, first of all, make sure you got fuel. Secondly, if you can, what you're going to do is do accelerate like this. And you should be able to see the fuel actively, actually, actively going down. You should be able to run this thing out of fuel with several pumps. And what's happening is the fuel is going down through this check valve into accelerator pump diaphragm out this port right here into a check valve right here coming up to this jet right here uh, or dis uh, accelerator pump discharge nozzle and then it's going out this nozzle right up inside there and shooting a fine needle spray of fuel into the throat of the carburetor. So if you can check that by looking at it, uh, leaning, leaning over the car, looking at it, great. Uh, if, you, if you're not getting that, then what you're going to do is come in here and you're going to pull this discharge nozzle out. Just take, put it off the side and then you're going to have your fuel in here and you're going to pump like this and you should see a nice little burble of fuel coming out at this point and if it's and then then you can check to make sure this nozzle this little tiny orifice is not clogged and that should give you fuel to accelerate because you said you had no power or no acceleration or no yeah no power no no get up and go and that's uh that's where that's part of the problem the rest of the problem could be in the diaphragm itself it could be misadjusted for instance this one in my opinion is just down too far but uh, you have to adjust this to get the correct stroke on the fuel pump lever where in heck is it there it is all right so what you're trying to do is get the this thing this little lever right here to move and if each time it moves that's what gives you your stroke of fuel and so this is this is adjustable and you want to adjust it to where you get a real nice fine needle spray of fuel coming out of here and then the uh, this um, discharge nozzle in here is adjustable just get in there it's brass and it, it moves readily relatively easily and you want that needle of spray to go 
right down the throat of the carburetor not not get splashed on the sides or anything so you can adjust that for proper direction and make sure it's it's a nice needle spray in fact if this if this were to squirt all the way through so you can get a, a, these things will squirt about six or eight inches when they when they're doing it really really strongly and a good job um idle mixture screw could also be uh part of the issue in terms of the backfire this could be in too far to where it's it's you don't have the correct uh adjustment on this your baseline is you screw this all the way in until it bottoms out just until it touches your yeah, by screwing in like you're assembling the eiffel tower it does not get you anywhere just get it down to where it just touches and you can back it out one and a half turns there's let's see how my fingers were in the way okay let's see if we can if my fingers are still in the way okay all right so we got this just all i do is just snug it to where it just stops back it out is half 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 okay one and a half turns that's a baseline this one over here is supposed to be closed off and you can see this one was not closed off and the reason for this being closed off is because this does not do anything this butterfly this throat does not do anything until you get up to about 3000 rpm then the vacuum opens it the car idles only on the first barrel and operates only on the first barrel until as they say you're under hard acceleration about 3000 or, or more rpm so this idle mixture screw needs to be closed off if you have to open this to get the car to idle properly then they did not do your, your throttle plate correctly this this part is screwed up over here so this is supposed to be closed off and again just close off to where it snugs it down to where it's closed you don't you're not assembling the brooklyn bridge by cramming down this thing now then inside we've got the pre-atomizers see if we can look down the inside this guy right there this is a pre-atomizer they're held in place by a jam nut and a set screw on the side and what you do is you put your fingers in here and you see if this thing will wiggle put your finger in there and see if it'll wiggle if it doesn't wiggle you're in good shape if it does wiggle then undo your jam nut and and uh, screw the um, set screw into where this thing does not wiggle this is a crappy design it's it's pop metal on pop metal and it's metal on metal seal there's no gasket there's no glue down here there's nothing it's just metal on metal and you've got to seal gasoline with metal on metal ceiling surface which is a ridiculous idea but that's what they did yeah let's check in here see if these are tight just for fun those are all tight so let's see what else we can cover here uh, baseline for um for idling and starting the car is you screw your your th idle screw all the way out screw it in and as soon as it makes contact you'll screw it in one and a half turns just like the opposite of the idle mixture screw so we just we've got our contact right here so half turn half turn half turn and that is your initial setting the car should idle and uh you you can only adjust the car uh the idle mixture screw uh, when the engine and, and the carburetors are warmed up uh can't do anything when it's cold now in terms of cold start you've got your fast idle which is this guy right here and what controls the fast idle is this little teeny set screw back here which is uh, impossible to get to almost impossible to get to when the carburetors are installed so the factory says you what you do is you set this the initial setting is a 15 thousandths gap right here and what happens is you when you pull the choke you are you're pulling the choke lever and this Rube Goldberg operation is going down here and it's impinging on this little uh, set screw and it's artificially opening your throttle all you're doing at the fast uh, the um, choke and fast idle is simply just opening up the throttle so you want to make sure that this is adjusted correctly if you can't uh, if the choke doesn't work and you don't have a fast idle it's because this is not adjusted correctly and it can be adjusted in the car but it's a real pain because everything is in the way and what i do is i will uh, disconnect the linkage and open it up like this and, and, and adjust it in this position here because you can actually get this stuff 
see what else we can cover here. Um, airflow. If you use a synchrometer, uh, you should have no airflow through here or at the very between zero to one and a half uh, if you use the synchrometer, uh, which is what everybody is using. Over here, you should be running between five and six in terms of airflow. Let's see. Um, main jets are huge, so they don't usually clog up. That's not an issue. Uh, as I say, with backfiring, you're not getting enough fuel in the in the uh, carburetor either through the um, through this uh, through the idle circuit or through the um, uh, check valve down here. And um, the check valve is, is just a tiny little thing. Let's see if I got one to show you. See if I got one to show you. Yeah. All right. This is what the check valve looks like. Tiny little fellow, and it's dri driven into the body of the carburetor. In order to remove this, here's a little hole right here. You have to pound it that way, and then to install it, it comes from the bottom. It's on a. It's it's in a tapered hole. And all this is is just a one-way check valve for the fuel. It allows the proper amount of uh, it allows fuel to go into the accelerator pump diaphragm assembly, and then when the diaphragm assembly is trying to shoot it up through here, this closes off to keep backflow from uh, taking place. Uh, boy, if you've uh, followed me this far and kept up with it, uh, I, I'm impressed because it's an awful lot of uh, information, hard and fast, but. Um, I'll, um, I'll be happy to look at your carburetors if, um, if you need me to. All right, um, so I'm trying to think before I sign off, make sure there's uh, anything, nothing else going on. Make sure the fuel level is correct. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, setting the fuel level, sure. All right, let's get my ruler. Where did I put my ruler? Okay, here's my ruler. All right. What I do in terms of setting the, the fuel level is you take your your um, float right here. You got a flat on on the on the bottom of the float right here. What I do is I take it and put it on a on a hard surface and sand it like that. There we go. Just rough it up a little bit. Why? Because you'll see the bottom is flat. And when you rough it up, you get yourself a little uh, ring right there. And that's how you measure the float height. 39 to 40, as I recall. And with the gasket in place. And so you're going to take this and you're going to... All right, let's get this on camera. All right, I don't have my glasses on so I can't see what that says. All right. Gasket in place. And looks like it's looks like it's right on the money, just about perfect. Um, reading about top of this ring right here. Reading 30, 39. So somebody knew what they were doing. That's how you set the float level. What am I forgetting? What am I forgetting? Well, that'll get you started. Good luck.